Hi friends, this is Dr. Kapoor Mehra and uh, I have been taught uh, since my childhood that you must learn to fight for your dreams and I often wondered how a dream would look like. I will show you my dream today. This is how a dream looks like. This is the second book of Conceptual Orthopedics for the subscribers. It has 2600 questions. What it does not have is the answers and explanations. These answers and explanations will be explained and discussed by 34 fantastic worldwide faculties of orthopedics. There are 122 chapters in the book. 116, that is 116 chapters, have 20 questions each. They have been placed system-wise. You will be told that on this particular date, we are going to discuss this chapter. On that date, the faculties will be waiting for you. You will have the book with you. You will keep on seeing the questions on screen. Multiple faculties will be interacting and telling you the best possible answer for those questions. This will also be available in the app for practicing as the chapter number. And the explanations, the recorded videos will also be available for the students to have a look later on. This is going to prepare you for all the national or international MCQ exams, whatever they are, in the best possible manner. Friends, this is how a dream looks like. I am leaving with you a short clip of one of the interactions that we had on conceptual orthopedics on the lines which I just told you. You will be asked to tell your addresses to our team so that the book can reach you as soon as possible. The book is complimentary for these students. They just have to make the payments for the courier charges. Thank you very much. Uh, Nawful, let's come to the question number two. Your clock starts now. Um, <clears throat> joint line after uh, TK is decided by. Joint line is decided by. Uh, A, proximal tibial cut. Uh, B, distal femoral cut. C, is chamfer cuts. Both the distal femoral and proximal tibial cut. And e, it depends on how much the surgeon decides to cut. Uh, sir, I have ruled out uh, a C option. Chamfer cuts is not the answer. Mm -hmm. I would like to uh, rule out uh, option E as well. The surgeon has to be careful uh, to maintain the joint line. Mm, the distal femoral as well as proximal tibial. Uh, Sir, I would go for uh, uh, option B, sir. Distal femoral cut uh, decides upon the level of the joint line, sir. So the more you cut the distal femoral cut, I think the joint line should go higher. Okay, Nawful. So, I'm just extending the question. So, what is your usual distal cut? Sir, I would like to uh, uh, replace the uh, uh, amount of cut uh, by the uh, implant thickness. So if the implant thickness is 9 mm, I would like to take off 9 mm from the uh, normal side, unaffected side. Sir. Yeah. Do you think there is a lot of variability in the distal thickness of the implants available? So universally, I feel uh, most of the implants have a 9 mm uh, 
this thickness of the distal uh, portion. Uh, that's what I feel. Sir. Yes. So uh, why don't think you, because there are two surfaces, the tibial surface and the femoral surface. Why do you think the tibial surface doesn't uh, contribute to the joint line that much? So uh, the distal femoral cut, I think, uh, uh, like once, like if you cut 10 mm, you will be only able to replace that particular cut by 9 mm thickness of the implant, sir. Whereas in the tibia, uh, like you have various options of inserts. Like if you cut more, you can replace that amount what you have cut with the insert as well as the tibial tracer. So I think that doesn't excellent. contribute to the... Excellent. That's an excellent answer. But can you sometime cut too much distal and can you replace that? Too much distal... Like you can replace build up the distal cut or tibial cut with the with the insert. Can you build up too much distal cut with anything? So with a bone graft or an augment, uh, can we do e so? Excellent augment. So not in the primary case, but if you have in some time in the revision, uh, you you may have a choice that you you have uh, no other option but distal cut is too much. But then you can build up with the uh, with with the augmentation. But normally you know that. Tibia, you can keep up building with the tibial uh, insert, whereas distal femoral is normally your 9 mm. So this is your 9 mm cut, which you normally go. The posterior uh, thickness can vary sometime in a high flexion or there are different implant can have, but universally the distal cut is, uh, distal thickness of the implant is 9 mm. Uh, even the posterior normally is 9 mm, but that can vary. Distal is not much variation there. And as you can see, you cut your uh, distal femur. If you suppose instead of nine, you cut 11 mm. So your joint line going up because you will build up that two mm uh, loose uh, gap with a two mm bigger insert. So your joint line go up. So now for when your joint line go up, what happened to the patella? Uh, so the patella uh, biomechanics is uh, affected. Uh, the yep. patella can so, uh, come down, sli slide down. The patella stays where it is. Yeah. So patella, let's say patella, patella, patella is stationary there. If okay. the joint, li joint line goes, keep going up, compared to that uh, joint line, the patella become lower and lower and patella baha. Yeah? Yes. Sir. So, so do you know some ways to assess your joint line during surgery? So uh, I think you can compare with the level of the patella, sir, the lower pole of the patella. Yes. Anything else? Mm, sir, I'm aware of only that, sir. Okay, so there are a few views, a few things you need to know. So remember this, as Nofal rightly said, if you cut too much, you can build up with the tibial insert. And that's why that joint line will be where it is. Whereas if you cut too much femur, you can't build it up. And so the joint line will keep going higher up and your uh, patella correspondingly will become Baha. And there are certain ways you need to know some bony landmarks uh, and some soft tissue landmarks. The one, one is, as you rightly said, lower on the lower pole of the patella. Normally that can be quite variable. We don't use, but we can use the bony landmarks from medial and lateral side. So you got epicondyle on both sides. So you can measure from medial side, it's a little bit higher, 30, 35. And from the lateral side, it's about 20. Or from you can uh, from the tip of the fibula, you can measure about 10 or so. So 10 here, about 20 here, and about 30 here is, is the joint line we can measure. So these are things you need to know. Uh, obviously, patellar height you can measure separately. And uh, all of you should know uh, these are the questions sometimes can ask. How do you measure patellar height? So some uh, radiological reference at about 30, 40 degree flexion, you should know these uh, categories. Back to Professor Ngraichan, sir. I think you answered the, the question very, very correctly. I just want to point out one aspect. So the nine millimeters of the implant resurface the normally the medial condyle. So that is in most of the knees, the prominent one. So you don't resurface nine millimeter medial and lateral. The lateral cut uh, once in a while is, is less than nine millimeters. That depends on the um, mechanical and anatomical axis you cut. 
So, and um, if you have in a virus knee, for example, a completely worn out cartilage on the medial side, then you have lost two millimeters. If you then cut nine millimeters, that would raise the joint line by two millimeters. So you always have to estimate how much cartilage is lost. And that, that uh, um, cartilage then you have to add to what is left. So that means once in a while you cut only seven millimeters because the entire cartilage is gone. Otherwise, with nine millimeters in that situation, you already start raising the joint line. And we heard problem of raising the joint line is one of the, the big issues um, that we have in, in primary knee surgery. Thank you, sir. So uh, to re-emphasize that, can you all guys see? If you see a normal uh, femur, the medial side is much uh, distal than to the uh, lateral side, normally. If you got varus, normally varus is uh, the worn out from tibial side, but sometimes can be femoral side also. So careful. If that is lost, then your reference uh, will be, if you cut then nine, then you're cutting here. And so joint line will be raised. So is that not fully understood that? Yes, sir. Yeah, so uh, remember when you're putting your jig, normally it doesn't sit on both. It will sit on the medial condyle because that's more distal. Uh, is, is that uh, uh, okay, Professor Gretchen? Definitely it's okay. And uh, I don't want to confuse the, uh, the, the, the group with the kinematic alignment guys. They, they would cut on both sides equal. But keep it to the me mechanical alignment, and then in most of the cases, it's more on the medial side than on the lateral side. So look at the yeah. most prominent femur. Yeah, good. Thank you. So remember, guys, the most prominent femur uh, uh, in your proximal distal direction or superior inferior direction is the medial femoral condyle. Most prominent femur, which we'll discuss probably will come later on, uh, is uh, is on the posterior bit is also the medial side, and we'll discuss that uh, later on. But remember, when you're cutting a distal cut, you're referencing it to the medial uh, condyle, and you have to be careful that it's not worn out too much. Question number three, Nofl. Sir. <clears throat> Tibial cut, sir. So